he had good targets to throw to. He ends up behind me during that situation. He was one of the most intense guys out there and his size didn't affect him one bit. Cutthroat business. He was a, a star player from the beginning. He blew him up. He blew him up and uh, he never looked back after that. Daniel? No, I'm dear Tay. Aren't your initials DWB? Yes, my initials are DWB. You're not Daniel Woodside Banks? No, I'm not Daniel Woodside Banks. I'm Dear Tay Winchester Banks the first. Any relation to Daniel W. Banks? Yes, he's my paternal twin brother. Can you tell us anything about Daniel? Not really. They you know, misplaced me many years ago, so I I don't know a whole lot about him. I, I look on the internet and I hear stories about the upstate hero, legend, something or another. So I know a little bit about him. What happened? About eight or ten, when I was about eight or ten years old, my daddy realized that I didn't have an ounce of Banks jeans in me. I was all self, he thought, with no athletic ability at all. So he had what he called an emergency vacation, where he ended up having to leave me at the Grand Canyon, and I've been on my own ever since. Have you ever contacted any of your family? No, like I said, I've heard the stories and I've stayed on the internets. Uh, I, you know, I know where they live, but you know, I just, I just can't bring myself to go see them, you know. Can you tell us where we can find them? Yeah, I can tell you where you can find them. I can point you in the right direction. Tornado. You gonna be a football player when you grow up? Today is the best day of your life. Believe me. Give me 18 years of daylight. That's all. Greatest leader I've ever known. What a ride it's been. I gotta see this. This far out here. Brett Favre. As we drove into the countryside of South Carolina, seeking to find the local legend known to his closest friends simply as D-Dub. Oh, different local legend quarterback. Well, why aren't we doing that story? <clears throat> simply known to most as Daniel. We couldn't help to wonder who was the man behind the legend and what was the foundation for his inspirational fortitude? Well, you know, Daniel was an athlete from the very beginning, but uh, you know, he, he, he was good at basketball, he was good at baseball, he was good, but uh, I helped him take it to the next level. He was inspirational um, in the theme, in the style that, that Elton John changed Candle in the Wind to Goodbye England's Rose. We uh, changed another of Elton's tunes. Uh, Hold your trophies, turn a Daniel. I count the ribbons you want to feel it. It was, it brings tears to my eyes to this day to, I don't remember any of the other lyrics. No. I'm nine years younger than Daniel, so I did not really get to see him play uh, sports growing up uh, and really develop into the athlete that he became. But I saw, saw a lot from the sidelines and watched some film and realized really, really quickly how incredible of a tiny athlete he was. My guidance, my tutelage, my inspiration, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm the reason he became very good at those sports. And of course, football was not there, we didn't have the football, but that was to come, and uh, I was gonna make sure he was gonna be good at that as well. It was clear that from an early age, Daniel had a strong will to overcome any physical shortcomings. But there was one thing that would stand in the way of his greatest desire. Of course, Daniel really wanted to play football uh, above uh, baseball and basketball because he, he had heard how good I was actually 
great in high school and uh, all the boys had heard about my, my exploits and uh, the records and everything that we'd set and uh, of course Matt got confirmation of that when he met my old football high school coach uh, a few years ago and he was bragging on some of those he was, you know, he was remembering some of those plays 40 years later. So, but we didn't have football in Townville, so he was kind of limited uh, there. Yes, as soon as he could um, walk, he, he wanted to play football, but Townville did not have a league, a little league football team. Finally, he was able to see his football opportunity on the horizon when he entered his first year of high school but things would not go for him as planned. So then when he gets to high school, uh, th this was his opportunity to play football. So he just all summer long before his freshman year, he was all excited about going out for the football team, making the football team. And he gets there and they took one look at this little guy and they cut him. I remember him coming home that day, uh, just defeated, realizing they wouldn't let him play because he was so small. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm I'm pretty small, um, at least a little big, bigger than him. So hopefully they let me play. He worked really hard that entire summer, um, preparing for what he thought would be the launch of his career. And Coach Vaskelly, no go. This was so devastating to him. He gave up all sports and put all his drive into band. Really? He quit playing sports and took up band? Lame. Daniel went from wanting to be Brett Favre to turn into a miniature Miles Davis. That became, uh, you know, his focus, and uh, I, you know, he took up the trumpet even after I suggested the flute. Uh, after you know, my, having mastered the flute myself, I thought that might be a good option for him. But he, he wanted to take a different route, and so, you know, not copy dad. Yeah, he tried the music thing. He he tried, and that worked out good. Eventually, he became the drum major, the smallest drum major, I think, in uh, South Carolina high school history. I gave him some pointers. Oh. And it was, uh, you know, wasn't quite the accomplishment he was looking for, but uh, it was pretty awesome seeing him up there giving his uh, uh, drum major signals. Having reached his new goal of becoming drum major and his high school years coming to a close, he set a new goal, attending Clemson University. Meeting Daniel back in the early days of like 1988, 1989, just having an opportunity to spend with Daniel. And Daniel was a little short, a little bit shorter than the rest of the players, but he went out there and competed just as much, just as hard. And, and uh, I was really impressed with his talents. Dane was like a little gnat. He, he was a gnat you couldn't get rid of. He was chasing down all the balls and, and just uh, getting in everybody's way. But, you know, Dane went on and, and I thought I taught him enough. You know, I guess, you know, ended up uh, not making his high school football team. Probably, probably because he didn't wear the three inch um, cleats that I told me needed to wear. So dang, you'll start listening to me one day. And while he was at Clemson, I think, I know all the coaches down there, been knowing all the coaches for years and years. And I really think they missed out on, on an opportunity to get a great quarterback. You know, if Daniel had been there, 
they might they might have retired his jersey and they might have you, you might not have ever heard I know Deshaun was was after Daniel's time but they might say Deshaun who they may say Taj who so I just wish that I had the opportunity now to get you to call me back I will give you my phone number I think you know what I'm talking about and Oh, Daniel, hold on. You listening? Okay. I want you to call me one day. You got my office number and you have my cell number. And you have yet to call me back. All right? Clemson was a short-lived moment in his life. It wasn't long after starting college, he would meet a lovely young tenacious girl by the name of Pamela Goolsby. Pop and Daniel and Matt came to visit my church in Florida and um, anyways that's where we first met and I saw him coming into church and thought he was cute and Ange kind of looked over at me and I looked over at him or her. <laughs> Within less than a year Daniel and Pamela were married. Life was moving rapidly for Daniel. Music, college, and sports. They were all quickly becoming just distant memories. But watching and being a fan of football would never go away. Okay, so one Sunday afternoon, typical routine for Daniel and his dad and brothers. So they were out there playing football. It was really cold. And so I'm all bundled up, huge pregnant with Caitlin. Realized that uh, my water may have broken. He's distracted and he's playing ball. He's, and I'm like, Babe, I think my water broke. <laughs> I ended up calling the doctor. You know, we needed to come on in just to check and double check to make sure. And so this was 10 days early. It's January 31st. So early. So I call the doctor and I tell Daniel and he's not really paying much attention. He was like, well, just call me and let me know. I'm like, okay. I wanted him to go with me. Yeah, he's still playing football. He, he had planned to go because it's Super Bowl Sunday. Stop with the football and come to the hospital with me. But I wanted him there with me and uh, a friend of mine was with me. She's freaking out. So they had to get a hold of him and have him come. And he, he was at his grandmother's house and they were watching, go to watch this, watching, they were watching the Super Bowl and just so mad um, that he did not prioritize coming to me and I'm fixing to have our baby. But finally, he was like, well, I'll just come. I'll come when it's halftime. Well, are, is it, are you in pain or whatever? I don't know, maybe he asked. I don't even remember that. <laughs> Sure enough, I had to wait till halftime for him to come to the hospital to be with me. But somehow, they all agreed that they would wait until the Super Bowl was over until they delivered the baby. I was not very happy about that. I was fine. It wasn't like, you know, life-threatening or anything, but <laughs> it really made me mad. So I think that's really kind of when my, my frustration with sports began. <laughs> because it kept him away from me and the baby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyways, he was a very happy guy when he knew he could wait, that he did not have to go back into the operating room with me until he got to see the Super Bowl finished. He was very, very, very happy about that, very proud for that. And I said, son, well, uh, I'm sorry you couldn't have missed this. You know, I hate, hate for you to miss the Super Bowl. Falcons finally here. He says, I'm not missing that. I said, you're not missing the Super Bowl for the birth of your child? No way. It was then I knew this is my son. He is a football player. Daniel and Pamela would go on to have four more children. Each one would watch the years pass by and the growth of their seemingly normal father take shape into what would eventually be known as the upstate legend. Yeah, I remember watching them as kids. I mean, it just looked like they were goofing off in the backyard, honestly. Yeah, it, was, it looked really fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were just having backyard fun out there. Just having fun? 
<laughs> no way in the world, not, not, not a Banks. It was far from fun. It was an injury fest. My nieces and nephew said that. Time to die. Fun. Hmm. Try being a safe safety valve. 11 out of 8 plays. 11 out of 8 plays, you had it easy. One Sunday, I crocheted my own jersey from the line of scrimmage. Um, no one noticed I had the needle point out until Josh clotheslined me and knocked my breath out. <laughs> yeah, I'd always seen like drawn on their shirts. I'm pretty sure they were doodling. I think I heard Pop say one time, you mean to draw and crayon for you? Yeah, he was yelling. Sometimes I got scared. Every game is life or death. It's not just a matter of having fun. This is serious business. Okay. Okay, welcome to the Banks Turkey Bowl 2004. This is January the 3rd. And we're getting ready to play the old guys versus the young guys. My name is, uh, contrary to rumor, it's not Joe Montana. It's Brett Farr. And before we get started, we want to go ahead and give, as they do in most of these bowl games, they give the MVP award too early. We're going to give our MVP award before the game today. The MVP today is Angela Gilbert, and here is the $20 prize money because you're filming this thing for us, and we appreciate you doing it. Angela Gilbert, MVP, Turkey Bowl, Banks Turkey Bowl, 2004. Let's hear it for Angela Gilbert. All right, next for the old guys. Let's go, uh, Josh. <laughs> the oldest. David, you, is that it? Okay, David, next, introduce yourself. Yeah, you're the old guys. Introduce yourself. The I didn't want to come out here. <laughs> didn't want to come out here. Anything that happens to me today, I'm not responsible. Come here, Chris, we got to get you on tape. Okay. Introduce yourself. Get you on tape. <laughs> a couple of years passed by, and all seemed like normal backyard football. But one day, lightning struck the core of Daniel's football hunger. And what people once saw as just a kid that was too small to play was now a potential giant among men. I know, and people do say we should do a documentary about the Brandon Street of Flag football win. I know. Daniel Banks, how do you, how do you express in words a guy like that? The eighth wonder of the world. Shortest wonder. Anyway, he uh, he's always meant a lot to me. He's always uh, always been a great friend. But uh, football, that's where we, that's where we really came together. We uh. We had one game in particular. I mean, there were, there's many games that we can talk about, many tackles, you know, interceptions, passes, running game. Uh, but one game in particular always stood out to me, and that was the game that we played Brandon Streeter and some guys from Clemson. We were up at the field, and they happened to come out there. And we, you know, of course, Dave's you know, all like a little five-year-old with candy. I mean, he's just all you know praise and everything and of course you know it was like it's Brandon Street or okay you, you didn't get a national championship or anything but okay we'll play him but uh but I tell you that guy when I saw him throwing those balls I mean, it was like a zip line with, with rockets on it it was just the guy had a ball you know had a he could throw and um Daniel you know I, I, we were at fourth down and 10 yards to go and I uh I was pushing my way through the guys, and it just seemed like it was it, like it was no chance at getting at them. They were just throwing balls, touchdown, touchdown. But we did, we were able to come back and you know stay with them through that game. And and uh, but that one particular moment it was fourth down, ten yard line. Streeter drops back. I'm going in. Didn't get to him. It was like split second, and he, you know, got the ball loose. And I thought, that's it. You know, this is like this is the end of the game. You know, he, he hadn't missed one yet. And I look up, and as I look up, I, I see uh, 
to see Daniel coming across that field just out of nowhere. And uh, I mean, the guy was right there, ready to catch that ball. And it's just right there. And, uh, and anyhow, you know, Daniel come out of nowhere. Caught that ball, went to the ground. It was like, I mean, trumpets were sounding, thunder and lightning. It was the most glorious thing I ever seen. And uh, it was that moment, it was that particular moment that Daniel, you know, Daniel Banks went from being an average Joe to Captain America for me. <laughs> That's not what happened. He, he actually dropped that pass. That's not when it happened. That's not when it happened. I was there when it happened. When the light turned on for Daniel and he realized he was a football player is when he fumbled a snap, he was scrambling. Brian James is harassing him. He picks the ball up and he's streaking for a touchdown. Daniel comes out of nowhere, chases him down, strips the ball, blows him up. And that was the moment right then and there that he became a football player. Okay, I didn't come here to talk about that. I thought you were doing one of another uh, behind the music things. I'm not gonna talk about that. The only real concern was that there might be real fans this time. And there was another Brian James moment. This one was even more dramatic. Somebody blew him up off the line of scrimmage. He didn't, never saw it coming because he outweighed this guy about 100 pounds. It wasn't Daniel. Yeah, it was somebody else, but put him on his butt. <laughs> Daniel realizing his potential was a pivotal moment that washed away all of the rejection and the stigmas of being too small. This newfound confidence gave him what he needed, pick up the football and test his football prowess. Well, you know, Daniel finally started coming along. Uh, through my tutelage, of course, because, you know, Dave, he was just, he just couldn't stand the thought of Daniel being better than him. So you'll, you'll see through the tapes as the years went by and games got better for him. He started throwing nice, pretty spirals. He started hitting people downfield instead of overthrowing them or, you know, laying ducks into the dirt. In those next several years, he got more and more time at quarterback. He was honing his skills. He, he, of course, his, his scrambling ability, his arm wasn't there yet, but his scrambling ability really made him a threat at quarterback. And that's what kind of got him prepared to take it to the next level, those years of training. It really didn't take him long at all to start making some incredible plays and really turn into a great quarterback. But just playing Sunday afternoon football would not be enough. For that hunger he felt as a young teenager was reignited, and the thirst for more was coursing through his veins. Who wears short shorts? We wear short shorts. This is your face. These are your eyebrows. This is you using Nair on your eyebrows. These are your eyebrows 30 seconds later. This is you realizing you have a date with your fiance tomorrow. This is your fiance when she sees what you did.
These are your friends when they hear what you did. <laughs> this is still you. Learn from this man's mistakes and don't nair your eyebrows. This PSA was not paid for, sponsored by, or condoned by Nair. In fact, Nair has several new hair removal products now, and one of which is sure to be acceptable for your eyebrows. Use as directed by the information provided with your Nair hair removal product. In 2011, Daniel organized a group of eager and semi-talented men to help him take on flag football in the upstate. Some of us were once talented instead of semi-talented. I warned him that that's a whole different ball game playing in the league. Those guys have played together for years. There are some old college athletes in there and I told him it was not the same type of football. We stepped out on that field the first time and all the lights, because it was Thursday night games and and uh, it was it was amazing and it just uh, seeing Daniel go from you know that that day at the the Streeter games and and uh, the Brian James situation, all that stuff, it all culminated to this one moment stepping out on this field now and we had refs, we had uniforms, it was. It was, it was just, I was awestruck to be able to stand behind that guy. We had some good talent, we didn't have great talent. Um, and then I realized, you know what, if he'd seen Nitro and, and me beat Brandon Streeter and Clemson football players, I think that served as an inspiration. And we did it without Matt, and he was going to have Matt. Sadly, that first season ended with a last second devastating blow in the semifinal game. Daniel and his team, Blue Steel, would lose their first chance for a championship title. We worked hard all year long to, to get there and, um, and just to not, not take home that, that trophy meant a lot, but it didn't, didn't phase our, our desire and it certainly didn't phase Captain America. Losing uh, that first season just really inspired uh, him and all of us to come back and um, do some big things the next season. We lost on the last play of the semifinals. We had a chance to go to the finals the first year. He threw for 38 touchdowns and uh, in 10 games, which is pretty impressive. That was the moment after looking in his eyes, I knew that he being the late bloomer that he was um, had come into his own and was ready for a championship. This did not face Daniel or his teammates in the slightest. That season, he had thrown 38 touchdowns in only 11 games. As he looked back, he could see just how much adversity he had overcome. This made him more determined than ever before. And so he set his sights on returning next season to gain that title he felt he had long deserved. In the offseason, he studied plays, reviewed game footage, and strengthened his throwing arm. When the 2012 season opened, he was more ready than he had ever been before. Daniel really, really started doing his homework. I mean, got an armband with uh, all our plays on it, started uh, getting ready to take stats the next season, and really, really uh, reading defenses and uh, you know taking to my tutelage and just really absorbing this the football knowledge that we had generated over the years that he just uh, absorbed and continuing to incorporate that into our offense uh, we became very good that second year and of course uh, in addition to my five interceptions that I had that year playing a little spot role on defense uh, Plus, it was nice for him to reward me for all that knowledge that I gave him by letting me come in and do some, some uh, mop-up duty at quarterback. 
and it kind of backfired on him because I was my quarterback rating was higher than his. I was seven out of eight with several touchdowns and several extra points in there. Of course, the key to that was I threw the mat just about every time. The one time that I had an incompletion, I threw the story and he dropped the ball. So I learned my lesson too. That was an exciting time. Ducks became spirals. He actually would hit me with a pass instead of toss me a pass. It was a great season. That following year, it was, we were, uh, we were hot that year. And we were, I mean, every single guy on that team was just a driving factor for one, on, one thing and one thing only, and that was that, that trophy. And it, wasn't, it was nothing that anyone can do to keep us from getting it, and we were gonna get it. Finally, his day had come, and this time, he was prepared for greatness. Um, once we get out there, um, I'm thinking that it's gonna be, you know, like a couple guys trying to have fun, and um, once I got out there, it was a completely different story. Um, Daniel was out there dropping dimes, but you know, he was missing that one pivotal piece, you know. I ain't gonna say it's me, but it's me. <laughs> the difference in this championship game and all the games that came before it was the team had to get together and go to Dave and straighten him out and tell him, no Dave, you're not gonna be substituting yourself in as quarterback on any plays anymore. And that's a good thing we did. He took his game to the next level, and, and the play that really epitomized that season was that great play where he dropped back, scrambled. Uh, he rolls out, got two guys coming in at him, and uh, he somehow blew right through those guys. Me seeing him, it was like the return of the Jedi. I mean, it was the way he used the Force. It was like unreal. It was it was unreal. I, I can't even express to right now what what that was like seeing him make that that final play. It was it was amazing. The 2012 Blue Steel roster was the best team the Upstate League had seen in over 15 years. Daniel's fantasy football team may be overhyped and a sad disappointment, but his astonishing career as the leader of Blue Steel is nothing less than awe-inspiring. He has gone on to win multiple championships and thrown for more touchdowns than any other quarterback in the league. In their last season, even after losing a key player to a kickball league. What? Who would give up football to play kickball? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> After losing this key player, Daniel was able to complete the season with 25 touchdowns. In many of those games, he pulled off incredible wins with a 64-year-old, a 57-year-old, and a 16-year-old on his roster. The sheer athleticism he displayed that day would make history, and everyone in the upstate would hear about it. You know, in the back of my mind, there was always this name that was just, just ticking at me. And I had heard it, but, you know, this guy still had some eligibility left, so I didn't know if he was ever going to come in and just dis disrupt everything that I was doing. I think the kid's name was uh, Daniel Banks. Now, older fella, you know, just, you know, one of those guys that, that slips through the cracks. Kind of like... Um, the story about that old running back in uh, Oklahoma, Marcus Dupree, you know, the greatest that never was. That's Daniel Banks. Daniel. Also, man, to add on to the story, I heard that about eight years ago, you threw for 38 touchdowns in your first year starting. It's pretty strong, man. Very strong. But considering who you had at wide receiver, I think you could have did a little bit better. Because I know if I had him, I'm dropping bombs out there. 70, 75 touchdowns, doing the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is create my own team. Bring him out over here. 
He's going to be my star wide receiver. So we'll see you in the playoffs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I knew this was about, this documentary was about all of us, but I thought the focus was on me and my role. Are you, it's not? Yeah, okay, I'm out of here. All right. This interview is about Daniel? I'm kind of confused. What's with all these questions about Daniel? Wait a second. I, I sang for you. Yeah, we're done here. This, is, this video is all about Daniel? Oh, okay. Scooter, come on, let's get out of here. We're done. Why, how come you haven't asked any stuff about, you know, my, my side of this? I mean, it was me and Daniel that carried that team. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me this ain't about my leaping ability? That's it. He always, always tries to take credit for everything. And you know what? I'm sick of it. You know what, you guys, this is amateur hour. I've had it. I'm out of here. You know, we're the ones that did everything. I mean, there's some guys out there made some catches, but anybody can catch a ball. I mean, I was at safety valve when Daniel didn't have anybody to throw to. And I got two rings. Daniel's got, he's got one. He'll get another one, don't worry. He, Daniel can do that. This ain't about me running all them touchdowns. I got us here. This is about Daniel? Uh, man, I'm out of here. That's what kind of guy he is. Daniel can make another championship in flag, you know, fantasy football just like he has in flag. He'll get it. He'll get it. I know he can. He's Captain America. He's Captain Dan. This whole thing is about Daniel? Yeah, you were on I thought it was about me. Come on, man. No, I spent my good, I came all the way up here and spent good time. I thought this was about me and, the, well, and what I did it. to win this championship. You're, you're You've got to be kidding me. You're in it. Uh, uh, no, I'm not in it. No, no, I am not in it. No. We had been warned by the Behind the Music crew that the Banks family was notorious for walking out on interviews. But we had been fortunate to have gotten what we had come for. The complete story of Daniel Woodside Banks had been captured, and this modern-day Rudy can now be shared with fans around the world. I was blessed by God to receive an organ. I needed a liver transplant, and I was blessed by God to um, receive that organ to save my life. And so, Daniel, if you would please tell your friends uh, if they would consider registering and become an organ donor, it's www.registerme.org forward slash Ray Williams, www.registerme.org forward slash Ray Williams. Please, um, thank you. Consider doing that. And I appreciate you. I love you. And happy birthday. God bless you. The next one is coming at you, Mach 5. 
Oh no. Oh man, what was he thinking? Right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I looked over there. I looked, I said, Dan, you got it. And he gave me this little nod like. <laughs> And if I'm gonna be a whistleblower in this thing, I'm gonna bring out the truth in this whole matter. I need protection. From day one. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one more time. That's your Venero. Nah, got that. Daniel is one of my favorite Banks males. But he's my least favorite white person. Sorry. <clears throat> there was a interception. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's him. Natural phenomenon. <laughs> Come on, eighth man. Wonder, eighth, wonder, eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> Take a look at it. Oh. <laughs> he was my Captain America. My mom's asleep. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> was that long? Did he get out long enough? Out. Of it's when you get victory. Wait, what are you doing? Yeah, that's my go signal. All right. All right. We're serious. You can do this. All right, ready? Bring, 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 bring. What? Dabo? How'd you even get my number? All right, let me do that again. I'm about okay, to smile too. So right. you probably Shall want to do that. Shall I? Yeah, I kind of want. It was her birthday. It was. He wanted to make it. Okay, whatever. Okay, sorry, I acted weird at five years old. Yeah, we were just. <laughs> All right, we'll go back to one. So they just looked like really elegant ballerinas out there, and yeah, it was just really fun and casual. I'm pretty sure Dad did take ballet. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. They're pretty graceful. <laughs> 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 I mean, we had at least one over the hill weekend warrior that uh, that was desperate. And it just, it just that's that's why we lost that last game, really. <laughs> Um, the blank. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's making me laugh. She's a bad assistant. I'm, I'm blank again. I'm <laughs> Come in and do a laughing one. <laughs> begging you, please stay in the hot seat. MK, please stay in the hot seat just for another few minutes. <laughs> she slowed down. She slowed down. I'm a 
Uncle and Uncle Daniel. Right here. I'm going to be bigger than Uncle Daniel. And... Uncle. Uncle Daniel's going to be tiny. No, yeah. He's <laughs> tiny. Yeah, just say it to me just like you're telling me. Uncle Daniel's going to be tiny. No, not. <laughs> Uncle Daniel's going to be tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Daniel's Spit out your gum real quick. Alright, now say it. Uncle Daniel is tiny. Right here. Uncle Daniel is tiny. Tiny. Yeah, tiny. Uncle Daniel is little. Uncle Daniel is tiny. Um, um, little. <laughs> I can add a subtitle. Uncle Daniel is smaller than Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Munchkin. Munchkin. <laughs> Uncle Dennis look out like a elf. <laughs> yeah, I remember this one time during a game, Daniel got pretty mad at the referee. The other team started arguing about a call that you know Daniel didn't like. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm wondering where Daniel is, and I look behind me, and he's kind of hanging out back back away from everybody. I'm a lot shorter than him, but I guess he knows that I'm a lot bigger. He might feel a little safe being back there behind, you know, his, his younger cousin, bigger cousin. I think we're, it might be full. I mean, we might have a burger or two left, but don't you have practice today? Most of the time, if there's you know, if someone catches a long pass, probably Daniel getting burned. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah. I think it's a, I think that's it. Great day! <laughs> Daniel Banks. Daniel, uh, I want to recap my association with you as a friend. Uh, several years back, your dad and I were talking about an opportunity with him, and right then it wasn't appropriate for him or me, either one, and he told me you got some opportunities, so I, I visited you in 84 Lumber in Greenville. I also visited 84 Lumber in uh, Malden and then Greenville and then Carter Lumber. And what I want to say, you're a quarterback, but you're a quarterback with people, with staff, with customers. You handle all of them, respect, concern, and expertise. I mean, it's amazing how well you do at that. You're, you're just born to do that. And I, I'm so impressed with you as a man and, and also as an, an employer of their company. And they, they hired a good man for district manager. I'll tell you that right now, Daniel. You're a good quarterback, too, but you're a better quarterback of people all the way through, Daniel. We appreciate you so much. God bless and have a great day. It's going now. You can just... All right, Daniel. How you doing, man? Happy birthday to you. I'm sitting here with my Clemson Starbuckets, buddy. But we just happen to be in Hilton Head at the Panera Bread. Uh, you know, I don't know how much you know Jack Denver Powell. He's on my staff at the College of Charleston. And, uh, you know, I know you ended up being a great football player. Probably should have stuck with basketball. Probably should have stuck with basketball. But I did hear that Jack Denver, with all the success he's had as a coach, he had to really work after it in basketball. He was the slowest rascal that your dad ever taught. So happy birthday, man. And hey, Daniel, what's up, man? It's Rendrick. Uh, I had a couple of things I wanted to get off my chest real quick. First, you're probably the worst quarterback I ever played with in my life, man. And two, you the only quarterback that I know couldn't hit water throwing the ball in the ocean. Nah, just kidding, man. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. You know, I hope things are going well. And hopefully we can link up, man, when my wolf pack come whoop up on those tigers this year. Go pack. Oh. Hey, Dabo. Um, oh, wait. You know, I'm in the middle of the video they're doing about me. Um, so, no, you just send the video. And no, 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 you can't come to the party. Bye. I know he's a great offensive mind, but I don't, I don't think, you know, you can learn anything from. 
I was told you that you weren't invited. I mean, hey, what do you want me to do about it? Hey, Dabo, hey, Dabo, I know, I know. No, we don't have room, we, we're jam-packed today. I know Martin said you called him too, but look, we'll get you the plays that you want. I know that's really why you're calling. No. Nah. Yeah, no, the, the, yeah, they're, they're still doing the birthday party. Yeah. Uh, well, no, nah, I can't, I can't, uh, can't, uh, can't invite you, man. I, I, you know, I know you've, you've called everybody and the answer is still no. Sorry. Hello? Hello? Dabo? How are you calling us at the same time? Dabo? You know, I'm a Gamecock fan, right? Excuse me, one second. Hello? Coach Dabo? Oh, hi. Yeah, the answer's still no. This is a, it's a by invitation only. I, I, I can't change any of that. I know that you've already talked to a few people trying to, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm really in the middle of something right now. I, it's important. Um, yeah, yeah. That is the only way to get that guy off the phone. He will not let up. That's sorry about that. Hey Daniel, Coach Sweeney at Clemson. I hope you have a very happy 40th birthday. Go Tigers.